So this video is a podcast interview with Natalie Bosselman, who won $1 million from the Publishers Clearinghouse. Are you listening? So this video is a podcast interview with Natalie Bosselman, who won $1 million in the Publishers Clearinghouse. How awesome would that be? My name's Timothy Schultz. If you are new to my channel, I do vlogs as well as interviews like this one with people that I find fascinating, including lottery winners and people that have come into sudden wealth and fame. In fact, I am a lottery winner myself. In 1999, I actually won the Powerball before going back to college to study film and journalism and broadcast news. And I'm now combining my experience with these things with my desire to meet and interview other people that I find fascinating, including other lottery winners and people that have come into sudden wealth and fame. And those aren't the only people I'm interviewing on this channel, but this interview happens to be one of those types of interviews. So if you want to see more interviews, do go ahead and subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon to be notified when these interviews come out. But this video is an interview with Natalie Bosselman, a podcast interview with Natalie Bosselman. And she won $1 million from the publisher's clearinghouse. I mean, how awesome would that be? It's incredible. I got to talk to her about all kinds of things, about how winning $1 million changed her life. She's also the first person ever to not only win $1 million from the Publishers Clearinghouse, but also to become a goodwill ambassador for them where she got to actually help award major prizes to other winners. So I got to talk to her about that. We even got to talking about the prospect of the law of attraction and manifestation and the power of the mind and her beliefs in that sort of thing are very, very interesting. But without further ado, let's get to it. Now here is my podcast interview with $1 million Publishers Clearinghouse winner, Natalie Busselman. So I'm here with Natalie Bosselman. She won $1 million in the Publishers Clearinghouse. Natalie, thank you so much for taking the time. How are you today? I'm wonderful. Thanks. How are you doing today? Good. Good. Thank well, these are pretty crazy times, but, um, you know, other than that, doing well. Yes. So thank you so much for joining me. So you won $1 million in the Publishers Clearinghouse. First of all, can you go back to the day before you won? How did you find out that you won? Oh, sure. Well, I don't know if you're very familiar with Publishers Clearinghouse, but uh, they have the prize patrol. So if you win something big, you're surprised. <laughs> so that makes for a really good reaction, obviously. <laughs> um, however, the day prior, they sent out letters to people who had won at least $1,000 because they have smaller prizes they give away as well. So I received that letter literally a day prior. So I knew I at least won that. So I was a little stoked, like, oh, hey, $1,000 at least? Phenomenal. That's great. And I told my family, who happens to live right next door, so kind of like everybody loves Raymond, it's everybody who loves Natalie, my family, <laughs> my family-in-law is next door. So I told my sister-in-law, Jody, I said, well, hey, I got this letter from Publishers Clearinghouse. I won 1000 And she goes, oh, how funny. May you won a million. Ha ha. Do you want pizza tomorrow? I'm like, oh, sure. Pizza tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> So the next day, I go to work as usual, and I'm working in a suburb of Toledo at the time. And I'm, you know, doing my business and everything, and I get a cryptic phone call. I let it go to voicemail because I don't know who this is, and I pick it up. And they say they're from UPS, and they have a package to deliver to me. I'm like, that just sounds weird and kind of scammy. <laughs> <laughs> because why wouldn't they just leave it there with a tag or something? So whatever, I called the number back. And they said, yeah, you have a package here. I'm like, well, that's great. Well, my mother-in-law's right next door. Why don't you drop it off there? Like, no, 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 we need to give it to you directly. And the butterflies start, you know, welling up in my stomach and my head just starts spinning like, I got a letter, wait, wait. Okay, wait, uh, I'm like, okay, maybe this is it. I don't know, maybe this is $1,000. So I said, okay, well, I'm working at such and such in Perrysburg, Ohio, a uh, suburb of Toledo. And so I said, yeah, they, they caught on that my in-laws were next door. Unbeknownst to me, obviously, was the prize patrol trying to call me to surprise me in person. <laughs> they go next door and my mother-in-law answers the door and they ask if they you know they know me and she goes yes yes that's my daughter-in-law and they go well she won a million dollars and she goes oh <laughs> so she shows them a picture of me so they know who to look for 
And they take my mother-in-law and father-in-law along with them to surprise me. Wow. <laughs> so I'm working just la 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 And my boss happens to be out of the office with some of our other uh, management crew. I'm working at a financial firm at the time. And I'm on the phone with my uh, boss, trying to, he's checking in. They're playing golf and said, yeah, something weird is happening. He goes, what? I'm like, I don't know, something weird. And then I see the van pull up with the local media and the balloons. I'm like, uh, Kirk, I think they're actually here for me. He goes, why would they be here for you? I'm like, hold on. So I still have the phone active <laughs> at the time. <laughs> so I'm running out to the lobby and I see the prize patrol, but they have the foot, the, the, the check held, held opposite. They always have that big check, right? Yeah. And they're like, are you Natalie? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, it's good. I'm like, it's good to meet you. They give me the, the bouquet of flowers. I'm like, so you have something to give to me? And they go, yeah. And they said, do you know what we're here? I'm like, well, I got a letter saying I won at least $1,000. And they said, you're right. You won at least that. They turned it around. There's my name. $1 million super prize. I fall to the ground screaming with that still active phone in my hand. <laughs> My boss is like, what the heck is going on? So I put the phone back up to my ear and say, I want a million dollars. I want a million dollars. Wow. <laughs> so they surprised me in person with the balloons, with the flowers, with the news crews there. I couldn't uh, grab my husband immediately because he was working at GM at the time. And it is a fortress and you can't get a really good cell reception at the time. So mm. I had to call his boss and say, it's an emergency. You get my husband on the phone now. <laughs> <laughs> and, how, and how did he react? Did he believe you? He, he sort of. My my yeah. husband and I we clicked together so well because we are polar opposites. Mm -hmm. So my mother in law even said, "You should thank God that you got Natalie as your winner because if it was my husband, my my son, that's great. A million dollars. Wow, fantastic. So, <laughs> <laughs> wow. so I was able to tell a few of my friends. Uh, they came over to my work and we got to jump and scream together. Uh, one of my good friends happened to start uh, school uh, for education that exact same day at UT. And they said, tell us something weird about you. And she goes, well, my friend just won a million dollars from Publishers Clearing House. <laughs> so she had the weirdest story. So I found out by surprise at work. So Wow. So what did that feel like in your head? Like, what were you thinking when you when you knew when you were told that you won one million dollars? Like, how did you feel? My like brain broke. My brain, it was like fireworks in my brain. That's why I like dropped to the floor. I just, I dropped like a, a pack, like a sack of potatoes. I honestly dropped. And then the realization hit of like, I know it's like taxes and everything, but still regardless, like my debt is wiped clean. I was working more than one job at the time. I can drop the other job. Um, I can travel. Um, I can do things in my life. I can start a nest egg. It was just absolutely phenomenal. That's that's amazing. Yeah. Well, well, congratulations again. So how often did you play and did you ever think that you would win? I, I always thought I would win something. I don't know if I had my eye on something huge. Um, I was playing practically every day. At the time, they had just uh, launched uh, PCH Search and Win, which is basically like a search engine. So like at the time it was like your Bing, like your Yahoo, like your Google search. So every day I would just log in once at least to get an entry. And down the road I won like maybe five or 10 bucks towards Amazon. I'm like, oh, that's awesome. You know, I can get a, a book or something phenomenal. But always in the back of my mind, I always like to like daydream. So at my other job, when it was slow, I was working in retail at the time at a small business. I would kind of map out what I would do if I had won a million dollars. So I'd be like, okay, well, I would pay off this debt. I would make sure I pay off my taxes. I would donate to this charity. Blah, blah, blah. So I would always kind of have an idea of what I wanted to do. I always wanted to put that intention out there. Mm -hmm. I was hoping I would win, obviously, but to win a million dollars like that, you know, I didn't know how or when. I just knew somehow it would happen. Thank goodness I was entering as frequently as I did because consistency seems to be, you know, the best thing when it comes to that sort of thing. Yeah, well, that's that's amazing. Yeah. Um, so you actually became the first ambassador to the Publishers Clearinghouse. You became the first ambassador. So that so you're the first person I was reading to actually 
not only win a major prize, but to award it to other people, right? Yeah. Yes. Yes. So, yes. Yes. So as the ambassador, how did that come about? And what, you know, how does that feel to actually be on the other end of it? We are actually awarding this, these prizes, these major prizes to, to other people. Yeah, it was, uh, it was very, <laughs> how can I wrap this all up in a, in a nice paragraph for you? Um, <laughs> Basically, when I met the Prize Patrol, when I won, we had a lot of great conversations and they absolutely loved my energy. And Dave Sayer, who has been there for so long, said, we're going to use you somehow. I'm not sure how yet, but we're going to use you somehow. I'm like, okay, that's cool. So fast forward to February the following year. I'm actually in New York City for my baby brother's wedding because he's living in New York City at the time. So I'm celebrating with my family. And I believe it was Dave who called me and said, hey, we have kind of like an idea. We want to run it by you. I said, oh, that's great. Well, I'm actually out of town right now. I'm actually in New York City. And I yeah, the Poultry's Clearinghouse is just outside New York City. They're like, why don't you come to the headquarters? I'm like, okay. <laughs> so um, I believe Deborah is either the CFO or she's, she's higher up in the management. But she was able to arrange it to get me in a uh, limo with Scott, my husband. So we traveled to, um, I can't remember, it's Port something, New York City, Port Washington, New York City. Okay. So they take me over in a limo and they surprise me. <laughs> <laughs> like so many people were in the lobby and say, surprise, congratulations. So I get to see the wall with all the other winners and things. And then they take me in, take us into a meeting. They said, well, we would like to utilize you as a goodwill ambassador. And I said, that sounds phenomenal. What does that mean exactly? <laughs> they said, well, we'd like you to travel with the Prize Patrol a couple times a year to help deliver the checks. And um, maybe you could share your personal insight as how, how it is that you won, how you felt, how it changed your life. Maybe write a couple of blog entries for us um, and you know help them on their social media. So I was able to travel to uh, Florida to just outside of Arkansas, to um, wow. to Nevada, to just outside of Las Vegas, actually. So just kind of all over the place to help award other million dollar winners. It was absolutely phenomenal. And it, it was awesome to win, but it was even more awesome to give. Mm -hmm. I know it wasn't my money necessarily that I was giving, but it was nice to kind of pay it forward in a way uh, to mm -hmm. others to see how they lit up, to see how their minds reacted, how they were going to process the win themselves. Yeah. And do you still keep in touch with any of them? Ever so often, yes. Yeah. Um, it's, it's been a while. Uh, my contract ended quite a few years ago. Mm -hmm. um, but every so often they might say hey or something, but yeah. um, they're a wonderful crew. Um, and. It blows my mind that I even had that opportunity. Actually, it really does. I, I, I live a very, I live a very blessed life. I really, honestly, have to say that. Hmm. Well, the 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 odds of winning are, you know, like the lottery. It's it's very very low. Yes. Um, so is it just, is it like a lottery? Do they? Is it just computer generated, or do they? How do they choose the winners? It's chosen by random by a third party helps to, you know, monitor and make sure that everything is on the level. So um, then I think they have to double check and make sure that person has no affiliation with Publishers Clearinghouse or any of their sponsors and such, obviously, because that would be against the rules. So luckily um, they're overseen, but it is, you're right, it's, it's random, kind of like a lottery in a way, but you don't have to pay. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's, yeah, it's still amazing. I, I mean, the odds are astonishingly low but somebody you're proof that you know people are winning and you're, yeah you're awarding it so that's that's amazing yeah. um, they actually i read that they've given away hundreds of millions of dollars over the years to people since their inception which was I yes. believe, 1967 or something like something crazy yeah 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 yeah, yeah that's amazing yeah. so so how do people enter if they want to play there are so many different methods. Um, prior to, I would say, the 2005, 6-ish, give or take, um, mostly you would enter by mail prior to that. Then, you know, the internet became more accessible to everyone. So then they launched a website. Then they watched other entities like PCH Search and Win, which I went through. But now you can enter, like, just through your phone. Um, you can, There's an app. There's several apps you can enter through, like, that has PCH games. You can play a game, um, get an instant entry into the sweepstakes. Um, there's, like, a PCH lottery. Um, you don't have to 
pay to play, but same concept, you choose numbers into winning a, a million dollars or 2.5 million and things like that. And you can also gain tokens through these websites and apps, and you can use those to win other things, such as like a car or like a Roomba or like $1,500 towards vacation or something like that. So there are many opportunities to win. And as with any legitimate sweeps or contests, um, I always want to put that out there. You do not have to buy anything or pay to enter. There's always an alternate way of entry. Like, for example, like the McDonald's when they had Monopoly. You didn't necessarily have to buy. You could write into McDonald's or ask them for a game piece. You, you mentioned earlier, you mentioned how you were envisioning winning before it happened. Do you think there are quite a few people out there that believe in the concept of the law of attraction in sort of creating something with your mind and envisioning it and, mm -hmm. and then it becomes reality. Mm -hmm. um, and even myself, before I won um, the Powerball years ago, I had a dream about it, a very a vivid dream a few months before it happened. And then I believed that it was going to happen and then it happened. And I'm not, yeah. I'm not necessarily claiming it was the law of attraction, but there are other sure. people that are telling me that they think that that's what it was. It could have been just mere coincidence and luck, but what is your opinion on, on that sort of thing? I am a true believer in that. I didn't realize that that was what I was doing prior. Um, a lot of people also call it manifesting mm -hmm. as well. And um, prior to my PCH win, um, my family had won a car. Um, I had won a trip to New York City. Um, and I had won other little prizes here and there. So I always believe that what you put out into the universe or your energy you will get back so i didn't realize law of attraction manifesting that was part of it i definitely think that if you have intention and you put it out there somehow it will come back to you it may not be the exact thing you were requesting but it could be something very similar to what you were requesting and funnily enough that you mentioned that i'm actually starting a 21 day course on manifesting so oh is that yeah, right yeah, I really, I really am actually. So yeah, uh, I truly do believe in it. Yeah, it's really, really interesting. There are other, mm -hmm. um, other people, other lottery winners who even claim openly, you know, they strongly believe that it was the law of attraction. Major, major winners, people that win hundreds of millions of dollars, you know, yeah. they claim that. So I find yeah. it very, very fascinating. Yeah. So a million dollars is a really big deal. I mean, it's a really, really big deal. It can really change lives in a big way. But how did that amount of money change your life? Sure. Um, like I said, getting out of debt was huge. Um, and I was working technically three jobs at the time. The job where they found me, a job in retail at a small business, and I was also bartending here and there for a local theater. So I was able to drop two of those jobs, uh, which really relieved really my stress levels like so much. Um, my husband and I were able to, to um, build our dream home right behind where we lived at the time. So we live on the same property, just a few feet behind. Um, my husband is a draftsman by trade. So he had drew, drew, uh, drawn up this dream home years and years and years and years ago. So for him to bring that into fruition was pretty awesome. I mean, little tweaks here and there, obviously, because the styles have changed. But to build our dream home, to be able to have our family over for Thanksgiving and Christmas, to have my friends over for like a, a quick party or something, just phenomenal. Being able to travel with my friends. We've gone to Japan. We've gone to New Zealand. We've gone to New York City on a whim. And I would not have been able to do that had I not been financially stable after this win. It just would not have been in the cards for me whatsoever. So, and it's been great to also give back. I mean, I'm not giving away thousands of dollars at a time, but I am giving back to the organizations that have made an impact in my life uh, locally and sometimes nationally. Hmm. Yeah, that feel, I'm sure that feels really good. Well, mm -hmm. that, that's awesome. It sounds like it really, really changed your life. It did. Hmm. What? And it made me more grateful as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How, how so? Yeah. I mean, they were little things that I didn't realize I was grateful for prior to the win. And now I'm even more so <laughs> grateful. It's like, you know, little things like I don't have to worry about paying that bill on time. I'm okay. I, at the time, you know, I have a steady job. Fortunately, now I'm furloughed. 
as a lot of people are in this case in time, but you know, it's like we have a cushion in case something else were to occur. Not many people have that option. I'm grateful for that. When I had my job, I was very cognizant of putting some aside, making sure I was investing in my 401k. I was like, this was a blessing, but money doesn't go on forever unless you nurture it and water it and disperse it in some way, shape, or form. So mm -hmm. it's maybe grateful I've been able to participate more in my community, uh, participate more with my family because I don't have the stress of having so many jobs um, and being more open to more opportunities. I don't think I'd be so open when I was stressing about finances. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And have you had anyone come out of the woodwork or anything like they do for some lottery winners? Yes and no. I know that's a weird answer, but <laughs> personally, no. However, um, within days of the win, I did have people I didn't know. So that wasn't necessarily would work, but just like out of the blue. People who said, well, I thought I was going to win. And then you won and your energy was so great. So I'm writing to you to see if you, no. <laughs> so, and then a few odd calls here and there, because it wasn't like our number was private or anything. So I let my big gruff husband answer those calls. <laughs> so they're like, oh, this mean man answered the phone. I'm like, yeah, stop trying to call me and mail me out of the blue. But no, honestly, I was very lucky. Like I said, a few random, random, random people. But other than that, it's no one has been that weird or anything. So they're just like, I just wish it had happened to me, obviously, but no, it happened to you and that's a blessing and you're awesome. So it's <laughs> like, thank you friends. So yeah, that's nice. Yeah, that's nice. Well, it sounds like it's been a really positive overall experience for you. Yeah. yeah. Um, um, what advice would you give to someone else that hopes to win the publisher's clearing house? Yeah, I would um, do it as a hobby. Don't put all your eggs in one basket. There are a lot of people who get extremely frustrated when they don't win. And it's a low amount, I'm sure. Um, I actually helped to moderate a um, group on Facebook for PCH fans. So it's just for PCH fans. There's just PCH fans in there. And I'm one of the moderators. And I, I wheel that band hammer <laughs> so quick. <laughs> I do. But I mean, um, I, I usually have to like call, call in the ranks when... Uh, a prize uh, that happens because people just get really depressed. They say, oh, it's a scam because I didn't win. Um, it should have happened to me. I deserve it more. I'm like, guys, it's, it's open to everyone who doesn't have an affiliation with PCH. It doesn't matter your background. doesn't mean it matter how much you need it. It doesn't mean it matter what your story is. It, it just, it the odds, like you said, are extremely low. When I won, it was one in 26 million and mine was a second chance prize. Hmm. So, yeah, exactly. So wow. I had to remind people that it's like I won, but it wasn't even technically the top prize at the time that that number was not drawn, quote unquote. So um, I was lucky enough to have my name in the till. It popped up. So I was like, just keep trying as a hobby. It's it's cool. Don't you don't need to buy anything unless you want to. Unless you're you're physically physically able to, <laughs> obviously, um, let's just have fun. I mean, there are a lot of people in the group who have won like. $500 here and there. There's another million dollar prize winner in there. Uh, someone who just won $2,500. So it's, it's very, it's varied, very varied. Uh, I myself just won $5 from them, um, just from playing on the app. So um, just think of it as a hobby, have fun. Um, but you know, just don't, like I said, don't put all your eggs in that basket. Continue to live your life. Continue. Don't don't make an obsession because people. Some people seem to be obsessed because they seem to play it like twelve hours a day. I'm like, don't do that. So it's like you're gonna lose connections that way. There could be opportunities that you are like shirking because you're obsessing. So, like I said, just do it as a hobby. Just do a couple things a day and, and do them consistently. I mean, and that's what I did with with the, the search and win. I did it, you know, once a day. And done. Once a day, and done. And then I hang out with my friends and my husband, go to work, do a hobby. So yeah. don't obsess. Let it be a hobby. Yeah, that sounds like really, really good advice. Yeah. Um, and if you do win $1 million, how do they award that amount of money to you? Do they just give you a check or do they deposit it or how does that happen? It, that's a large it, transaction. It, sure. It's a long, large transaction. And um, I don't know how it works with... Um, the lottery lottery, but when it comes to sweepstakes, a lot of this, these things are actually annuities. So you uh, need to find a financial advisor and go over what your current needs are. And then they will tell you, they'll give you a breakdown as to what the annuity 
the current day value of that annuity is. So your lump sum versus getting payouts for 20 or how many years it is. And then the last payout of that last year. So we opted to take the lump because it was going to be more beneficial to us at the time. Mm -hmm. After that's done, after all your paperwork is done, then they um, do a, like a FedEx or UPS to you with the check. Mm -hmm. And then you deposit said check. However, when you get the price of prize patrol surprises you, at least in my case, they did give me a smaller check of like, I think $25,000 or something at the time. Mm -hmm. And uh, to kind of like say, this is a, like to show you we are real. Here's part of your payment right now. And the funny thing is I went right across the street to my bank at the time. They're like, I don't know if this is going to clear. Cause I got <laughs> <it's a scam." laughs> and then when I visited them a couple of weeks ago, they're like, that cleared. I'm like, I know. Yeah, it was it was just funny for them to say, oh, my gosh, I actually cleared. She actually did win that prize. So, yeah, it, it for my case, yes, it was a physical check. Hmm. Wow. Yeah, that's awesome. So, yeah. And then your bank might give you the stink eye. That's OK. <laughs> right. So when you're holding that check, were you nervous? How does that feel? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yes, because I. It's weird for, for many of us who've never seen so many zeros behind numbers before in their life. You're like, ah, let me make sure I get this to, to my financial institution immediately, you know? Yeah, nervousness, a little bit excitement, obviously, but nervousness, definitely, for sure. Yeah. Well, you said, I mean, it sounds like you've been really, really smart with it, with your investments and the way you've chosen to do everything. Um, We've been trying, yeah, most definitely. Yeah. With some some lottery winners, anyway, some of them, you know, you hear the stories in the media how they go through mass amounts of money. Why yeah. why do you think that that is? I think it's a couple of different prongs. Um, with Publishers Clearinghouse, they require you to have a financial advisor and an accountant hmm. before even starting that process of getting your money because they want you to do the best that you can with this uh, windfall that you receive. With lottery winners, I think it's because the amount tends to be far, far more lofty, which, yay, great, obviously, but that money just seems like it's going to go on forever, right? It's because it seems so astronomical. Um, and then, of course, there's kind of like that survivor's guilt, quote unquote. So people are coming out of the woodworks, like friends and family, like, oh, of course I can give you this money. Of course I can help you with your mortgage. Of course I can buy you a car. And then, you know, maybe even like underlying problems will come to the top that you didn't realize before the win. Like maybe you had an a, a issue with gambling or maybe substance abuse and maybe that may come to the surface and you don't, you know, tackle it as you should. I mean, there's so many different prongs that could happen. I mean, there have been um, like shows about, you know, lottery winners who have had it all and then lost at all so i guess it just depends on that person and what they've been going through in their lives as well and where it stage they're in as well when you're younger i mean like you said people assumed the worst like always oh, gonna blow it like mm -hmm. when you're younger you did, it may be more of an app to it but there's also like 50 year olds who have done the same thing so just depends on where you are in your stage of life yeah no i, I completely agree and there, there's a lot of a lot of factors yeah yeah I, I definitely had some people come out of the woodwork and i've also been on um, national television, you know, a few times. And every time that happens, you get people that come out of the woodwork as well. Same, 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 same. Um, which uh, shows were you on? I was on um, Lottery Changed My Life a couple times. Yeah. Well, yeah, a couple different times, but they've replayed it so many times. And I've been on Ghost Adventures because I did a, a documentary on ghosts. And so... Oh, cool. Uh, yeah, they have... I was living in Denver at the time, and they, mm -hmm. they happened to be in Denver at a mansion that is thought to be haunted where i edited the film and so uh, i filmed with them a little bit i don't know do you believe yes. in ghosts i yes <laughs> <laughs> <Do you laughs> i believe there, i believe there's some like spiritual like resonance that still you know is around and i'm just outside of toledo in um there's a uh neighborhood called the old west End, which is one of the oldest neighborhoods in our area a lot of victorian beautiful huge homes and yeah a lot of people who live there said yeah we have a ghost i'm like yeah i bet you do <laughs> <So>. <laughs> but i've also been on the lottery changed my life and i'm the same way whenever that show pops up i get all these random friend requests like what is going on and i have a friend out in, in the, the, the 
general Denver area who messaged me like, your show is on. I'm like, oh, that's why I'm getting all these random Fred requests. <laughs> and um, I've also been on the Ricky Lake show um, mm. as well, which is oh, wow. pretty cool. Um, but on yeah. um, the manifesting group that I'm in, we also have a Facebook group. And I introduced myself and told a little bit of my publisher's clearinghouse story. Mm. And someone in the thread said, I thought you looked familiar. I literally just show, saw your episode of The Lottery Changed My Life. I said, oh, my gosh, that's so weird. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, it does come back at you. Luckily, it's been nothing but positive. But like you said, when you've been on national TV, like people will recognize you. And it's kind of strange. I mean, it's kind of weird. It's kind of like being like less than the D list. But it's very, very weird. It's very weird. Yeah, it is. It is. Yeah. I they one of the episodes I did, they re, they did a recreation of the dream I had because I was telling the producer about about the dream. And so they did a recreation of it. And sure. the show was very popular and it's I don't know I have people that come up since I've started doing these interviews you know I have people that find me they find this show and then they're like oh my gosh I've seen you I've seen that so many times I've been watching it so many times but I think there are people that love that show even though it hasn't been on oh, the air for a while definitely I think it's on Discovery Family or something uh which is funny because I watched My Little Pony I'm like hey that's me after my little pony. <laughs> you know it's just so like, oh, okay, this is weird. Yeah. But it reruns somewhere. I think TLC puts it up every so often, too. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. 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 Very cool. Yeah. So there are a lot of people out there that are, they have definite opinions about whether you should be allowed the right to remain anonymous if you win a major prize. And many people yeah. believe that you should. I, I didn't have the option. Because of your the state you were in? Because, or... of, the, because of the state I was in, yeah. Yep. I, I didn't have the option, but... I also, and so I was like a deer in headlights, just terrified of cameras and everything. But um, yeah, sure. I, I came to really enjoy it. But I know I've met people that really just enjoy that type of thing. And they love being mm -hmm. in front of the camera or public speaking. And so sure. for, for them, that sort of when they embrace it, you know, to, yeah. to, um, to tell their story and to be an open book and, you know. So yeah, definitely. I and I think, yeah, it definitely, I mean, I think... I think the fame came a little bit with the the uh, Goodwill Ambassador thing as well, because I did do a little public speaking because of that. And I do have a background in communications. I do have a small background in acting. So it was a little easier for me to take that plunge than maybe others. So, I mean, it came with that a little bit as well. But, I, you know, it, it was an interesting experience, that's for sure. Yeah. No, it's ex it's extraordinary. And I think that's why the public, why everyone is so interested in it, because it's yep. very few people ever... Uh, actually experience that and it's just, yes. it's just incredible and yes. so, so the people that you award the prizes to uh, what are their reactions typically it was so mixed yeah. <laughs> so mixed I mean the very first one I did um, I, I think I sent you that picture of Marilyn uh, she was just outside of Miami and we had to go find her uh, not everyone is home when we visit and she was at church actually um, and when she won, she, oh my gosh, she was in church. So the spirit hit her extra hard and I felt it like through myself too. And I was like, oh, I'm feeling a little empathic right now. Cause she was just like, thank you, Lord. And everyone was just cheering. And it was just, the energy was amazing. And then versus, um, one, one like another winner who was absolutely lovely, absolutely great. He, uh, I don't know if he's still, um, uh, mail, mail delivery, uh, USPS postal carrier, but we found him on his route and he was like in shock. Wow. On, <laughs> on his route? <laughs> yup. He was in shock. He's like, wait, really? This is how, like, he couldn't fathom and put the pieces together that I entered this thing. It was possible and I won it, which I can completely understand. Everyone's going to take this kind of news differently. So there's the, oh my gosh, I can't believe this. Thank you, Lord. And then versus, deer in headlights what just happened so wow. it, it runs the gamut it really does versus you know me falling on money saying i won a million dollars it's just right. the gamut this runs the gamut yeah, yeah. Well, that's amazing i mean it's one yeah. of the most incredible things i think that can happen to a person yeah um, is i don't want to take up too much of your time but no, that's fine is, is there... what am i doing is the pandemic <laughs> i know i know it's <laughs> it's a crazy crazy time yeah um but is there anything else that you wanted to say today that maybe I just don't know enough to ask? Oh, sure. 
Um, you don't get your chat, your, your large check immediately. It's going to take weeks upon weeks upon weeks. I won in August of 2008. And I think it wasn't until December that I received that lump sum check just because of all the paperwork that needs to happen and all that fun stuff and releasing those funds and getting them to me because I took the lump. So that's cashing in that annuity. So it does take a hot minute to get your prize. So I wasn't like, I quit my job. <laughs> <You know? laughs> I mean, you, you have to really think about that. And like I said, I, I dropped two of my jobs because I knew I had that coming and we did have that smaller check. So I was able to do that. But um, yeah, don't say, don't immediately like, quit your job if you only have the one job. Wait until everything is, is set. Maybe, maybe I mean, you obviously, if you don't want to work anymore, you know, give yourself a few weeks prior, like a buffer before that. You don't want to say, well, I'm a little broke until I get my check. Don't do that. <laughs> don't do that. Um, let me think of anything else. Um, the prize patrol is such a unique concept because they don't know who wins till like a couple days prior to that day that they deliver. So they are like booking last minute flights or trying to figure out how to get to that person. Cause they could be within New York state themselves and they just need to drive versus, you know, hopping a plane to Detroit Metro to get to me in Toledo or hopping a flight to go across country or things like that. They've even, this wasn't under when I was there, but they have delivered to someone in Alaska before and had to use a dog sled to get to them. Wow. Yeah. I'm almost positive you can find that on their blog. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty certain that was the case. So, I mean, oh yeah. So it's very last minute. They have to do a lot of finagling. that to get it, um, figure out where to stay. They have to figure out where to fill out those balloons. They, they try to get their winner some champagne and those, like, presentation um, roses that look like, you know, you're Miss America when you win. <laughs> so there is a lot of things going on behind the scenes before you – get that surprise and get your checks. So shout out to all those people who do the behind the scenes work before all that even happens, because it's just amazing how much time, little time they have before everything has to go, 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 go. So, yeah. Yeah. I can imagine that would be a little stressful behind the scenes yes. to find because, you know, who knows what people are doing um, at that moment. I didn't realize it was that close to the actual drawing. Mm -hmm. It's pretty close. It's within days or even half a week. It's, it's pretty close. And you know, weird thing, even prior to the pandemic, Things may happen that may change their trajectory, like weather or like that person isn't even in their town. Like maybe they're on vacation or something. So they have to go back at a later time to deliver the check because they'll try to do as much hunting and digging for you as humanly possible. If they know you're going to be there later that night, they will try to camp out and surprise you. Um, but if they say, hey, neighbor, you know, your, your neighborhood. Oh, that's great. But they're in Miami for a week. Oh, Okay, <laughs> so they have to, you know, change things up a little bit. So, yeah, just little things that people don't realize that they do their best to deliver in person. Um, and also, they do not send you friend requests. They will not hit you up on Instagram and say, hey, you won $2.5 million and a Mercedes. Just give me a green dot card with $250 to pay the, the taxes. It doesn't work that way. Uncle Sam will ask you for your taxes when it is time <laughs> and yeah. pay those taxes. <laughs> Right. Yeah. And if it's anything mm -hmm. like the lottery, it's pretty, pretty hefty. I don't know. Yes. <laughs> yes. Our accountant said that is the biggest, like, um, oh gosh, what, not risk. I can't believe remember what he said, but this biggest payout to the IRS I've ever seen. And I go, yay. <laughs> so <laughs> I mean, yeah, they will. My uncle Sam wants his money. Trust. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But it's still, it's still amazing. It's mm -hmm. you know, life, life changing. And you're, it so, is. so they contacted for your win. They contacted your parents. Is that right? No, my my in laws actually Your because in -laws. Okay. because I told them they live next door. <laughs> oh. But they also snooped on my uh, social media and found one of my jobs where I worked at the time. Um, it was a phenomenal place called Honey I'm Home on um, Home Interiors, and my boss, who was also a good friend of mine, answered, and he gave them my cell phone number. So that's how they were able to contact me in the first place because they didn't know my neighbors were actually my family. So he's like, after the fact, I called him to let him know. He was, oh, thank goodness. I was feeling really weird about giving them your number. <laughs> I was like, what is this, this fake? I was like, no, you did a good job, John. Good job. <laughs> but yeah, they, they contacted my work. One of my, one of my places of employment called me. And then I said, hey, my in-laws are next door. So my in-laws were technically some of the first people to know. And technically, my husband's grandmother kind of knew which was kind of funny because where they got the flowers was in town um, up the road in true grand rapids ohio 
And her retirement home was across the street from that florist. Hmm. And some of the uh, people who worked there came out because they're like, what's going on? I see this publisher's clearinghouse stuff. And they said, well, someone in your area won. So the orderlies went back and told everyone in the home saying someone won. So technically grandma knew but didn't know it was me. So it was a very, very bizarre day, that's for sure. And I had to uh, change a doctor's appointment that was later that day. I said, this is the weirdest re uh, request for re changing ever. But... I won a million dollars. I don't feel like getting po poked and prodded today. <laughs> <laughs> so they put that in my chart. So when I rescheduled, they said, yeah, this was in your chart. And I guess I saw the news later that day and you did win. So yeah, good on you. <laughs> so, wow. Bizarre. Bizarre. Wow. Yeah, wow. yeah. Yeah. That is amazing. And when, yeah. when your, I believe it was your sister that was joking about winning a thousand dollars. Yeah. My sister-in-law. Yeah, yeah. 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 Your sister-in-law. Did you think, did you think that it was possible that, you know, you might have won the big one, the big prize? Just an inkling. But mm. like I said, I'd always kind of mapped it out slightly in my head when I had free time. Like, oh, how would I spend that? Blah, blah, blah. I'm like, it's a possibility. But not until I got that cryptic call that did that final puzzle piece kind of fall into place. Like, I think you won a lot more than a thousand. It yeah. may be a million, maybe less, but... Oh, something, something bizarre is happening right now. So it wasn't until then that it truly clicked that this is a possibility. Yeah. Well, that's, yeah. that's incredible. I and we did have pizza that day too. So she said, do you want caviar? I'm like, shut up. I want pizza. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Which reminds me that, you know, it seems like a lot of people that win major prizes, not everyone changes. I mean, the people I've met anyway, most of them haven't changed. It's just sort of magnified their personalities. Yeah. To do things on a larger level or perhaps free up some time or, you know, I mean, it depends on the amount you win, too. Oh, but, yeah, of course. Um, but it sounds like it really changed your life in quite a few ways. Yeah, it changed my life. But I, I, I mean, if you ask a lot of my oldest and dearest friends, they say Natalie is not any different than what she is. I mean, she's still that bubbly, happy person that we've always known. So I just think it just happened to, you know, free up my life a little bit more, you know, just made yeah. things a little more accessible. Yeah. Do you have anything else that you want to say today? That mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, I could go on many a rant, but I won't. Um, <laughs> but um, I mean, these are very strange times. Yeah. So, I mean, just hunker in, um, do some self care, um, reach out to others. Um, if you're confused about things, you know, reach out, please. Um, and, you know, just be supportive. That's the most enlightening thing I could say at this time off the top of my head. Yeah. And I have one last question because you were talking about earlier about how it felt really good to give, you know, when you were on the other end of it, you know, awarding the money to other people. Oh, for sure. It felt yeah. Really, um, really good. And do you think that money creates happiness? What's your opinion on that? Because I know, oh. uh, because when you give money, I think it's proven that it makes people happier in their mind. There's been studies that it makes them happier, but obviously you can't give indefinitely. You can't just keep no. giving and giving or you, you won't right. have anything left very quickly. Exactly, it can, yes. It could go away very, very, very quickly um, yes. if you just keep giving. Um, but, but what is your opinion on happiness and money? That's a fascinating question. Wow. Um, it's, it's kind of like that old saying, you can't buy me love. <laughs> No, money doesn't bring happiness. Um, it, it can, obviously. There's going to be some like endorphins and things like that will trigger into your brain once you realize, oh, hey, money that I wasn't expecting. Phenomenal. To a point, yes. I mean, I'm not going to say that it, it doesn't help to bring that happiness. I mean, but technically, you shouldn't be relying on things to bring you that happiness, which is kind of the key. So, um, that's why we didn't go too crazy. Um, we knew we needed to pay off bills and debt to get ourselves set. That brought happiness because that brought stress. Um, we needed. We knew we always wanted to bring our to build our dream home so we could uh, help house family when they visited, um, have Thanksgiving, Christmases. That helped to bring um, happiness and joy. Um, but like, I don't know if I would have found the same happiness had I bought, you know. Um, like a sports car, not that that's bad. I'm just saying for me, that wouldn't have brought me happiness. I mean, I did buy like a PS3 at the time. That made me freaking happy. <laughs> but, 
<laughs> you know, um, I just don't, I think it can only go so far. It depends on what your personal goals are. What would, would have made you happy prior to having a large windfall. Um, if you already had that giving spirit, I think you already had that happiness in line. If you already had that joyful spirit, you already had that in line. And I think I always have, I've always tried to be a positive person and I knew that always setting that out would bring positivity back. And it has in many different ways, even past the win. Um, when I finally left the job where I won my prize, I was like, what am I going to do? I left my job. I don't have any prospects. And then in fell into my lap, like my dream job for two years, where I was a concierge at a cancer center. So I've always had kind of like that giving spirit, like you said, giving that money, you know, is, is awesome as well. Also gives you that, that feeling of happiness and joy. And that's what I try to do all the time at the cancer center. And the kind of fallback to that is you have to be careful of how much you give, like you said, mm -hmm. because you also have to be careful of your emotions because you could give too much and just be spent. So luckily the business I was with called Best Upon Request, they said, Take your time off. <laughs> you will need to to re reconstruct the to refill your 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 jar, you know, or your soul again because you're giving so much, especially in something where you're doing palliative care, cancer care. Um, so yeah, if you already have that mindset of what brings me joy is not necessarily material, I think you'll go very far. Hmm. Hopefully, they answered. I was like, that's a very interesting yeah. question. How do I put it to words? But yeah, no, that sounds very wise. Actually, I think I. I agree with you. Yeah. Um, I've never really been super into material possessions most of the time. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't think that they necessarily in it of themselves create happiness. I mean, for, for one thing, for a lot of things, you have to share it to get, yes. to get real enjoyment. So exactly. And that's, that's why I was so happy with the home because we could then share it with my family. We moved in um, Halloween of 2009. My mom was already telling me that the family was coming over for Thanksgiving. I was like, okay. <laughs> so, you know, I mean, it was happy to share it. And we've even had family over last summer, um, which was absolutely wonderful to see that many you know, members of my mother's family come and visit and be able to have the space to enjoy each other and to run around. It's, yeah, exactly. It's what how you share it, most definitely. Yeah. Well, sounds like you, you've been very smart about it. I think it's it's really a very positive thing that they also have, they give you a financial advisor upon mm -hmm. it. Um, well, you have to, they require it. So require it's, it. I'm sure they could recommend some, but it, unless you have one in mind, they probably say, well, these are some financial advisors in your area. I was working for one at the time. So <laughs> I said, Kirk, Will you please manage my money? So I was very lucky. I already had one in line. So, uh, yeah, and it's very smart that they say get a financial advisor, get an accountant, because you're going to have to figure out how to pay those taxes, obviously. So don't spend your money immediately, obviously. You know, put some aside and, and get those taxes paid, then move forward, obviously. So that's probably one of the smartest things I've heard any organization do when it comes to that sort of thing. So, yeah, I know they do that type of thing in. Europe in some places and some oh places. smart but with the lottery here in the United States obviously they don't in most places that I'm aware of anyway they don't do that but I wish they no would because I think yes would really help people but it would have made a huge difference for so many people I'm sure yeah well yeah I don't want to take up too much more of your time I already said that once but um, do you have any last any last words before we sign off I really appreciate your time no my pleasure um no nothing Nothing immediately. I'm just hoping that my 21 days of manifestation works out well since I'm out of work right now. So mm. I'm like, you know what? Let me get my vibe back. I mean, maybe another job will come its way. Maybe another opportunity will come its way. So I just got to refocus because um, funnily enough, I didn't even tell you, um, I broke my ankle in February 15th this year. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah, it was, it was fun. Um, so <laughs> <laughs> I was on stage. Oh. And I, we were taking our final bows, and I literally broke my leg. Like they oh, say no. in theater, break a leg, and I did. So, <laughs> yeah. Ah. So I've been not working since February 15th. So it's been very bizarre. <laughs> so, oh, no. so I was, like, quarantined prior to the quarantine. So, <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. It's been very weird. So here I was thinking, you know, come May, I'll be walking with my friends outside. And 
yeah, Mark, come March. Yeah, you're furloughed. There's a pandemic, and sorry, your job won't be here any longer because we're losing money like crazy. It's like, oh god. Oh. <laughs> so yeah, it's been. So I was like, physically heal thyself, and then spiritually, mentally heal thyself. So that's the next path I'm taking. So I'm looking mm. forward to it. Well, yeah. yeah. Well, I'm sorry to hear that happened, but yeah, it's glad. it's a story now. It's fine. Yeah, yeah. I can't <laughs> believe you literally broke a leg. I know. <laughs> I said break a leg. That's, uh, well, I wish you much luck in continuing to be on the mend. Thank uh, you. I, I believe you will get there. I love what you're doing with the manifestation stuff as well. That's Thank you. Thank super, you. super fascinating. You'll have to report back with your success story in, yeah. in the future. Well, Natalie, thank you so much for your time. I really, really appreciate it and uh, wish the best for you and your family in these times and um, just it's an honor to meet another winner and i really really appreciate your time oh it's my pleasure anytime great to talk to you so that was my interview with natalie bosselman if you like this video go ahead and hit the like button and let me know in the comments what you think of this interview and what would you do it's the one million dollar question here today what would you do if you won $1 million from the Publishers Clearinghouse? I love checking out your comments. As always, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon if you want to see more interviews like this one. But thank you so much for watching, and thank you for your support.